As you remember, back in the fifth episode of my retro gaming series, I showed you the Formula 1 games of the PlayStation 1 generation. This time I show you all the PlayStation 2 generation games of both Studio Liverpool and Electronic Arts, and we start immediately with the 2001 season. 2001 was a transition year because Sony released the PlayStation 2 and Microsoft released its first console Xbox. Trust me, the generational leap between PlayStation and PlayStation 2 was huge and way bigger compared to the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 transition. We were starting the golden era of racing games and Formula 1 hadn't one but two games eSports Formula 1 2001 and Formula 1 2001 by Studio Liverpool. While the first game was available on PC, PlayStation 2 and Xbox, the second one was available only on PlayStation and uh, PlayStation 2. Talking about menus, both games had different style. While the Electronic Arts counterpart had a cleaner style, the Studio Liverpool game had a more aggressive and darker theme. At this point you will ask me immediately which game was the best one. In my opinion, the Electronic Arts uh, F Formula 1 game wins on both graphics and physics, despite a close battle uh, with the other one. That's because the Studio Liverpool's game had a tires model which had uh, a bit of uh, soap effect, uh, which uh, will remain the same uh, until Formula 1 2004 and it will finally change in with uh, 2005 while you could feel more the downforce in uh, the Electronic Arts Formula 1 game. Moreover, the EA Formula 1 game had better visual representation, especially before races, blur effect while passing on curbs. But Studio Liverpool's game had different sounding cars. A Ferrari sounded different compared to a Mercedes engine, while on the Electronic Arts game the sound was the same for all the cars. But uh, we must admit the EA Formula 1 game had a realistic cockpit sound and uh, an exterior sound. EA featured also very detailed elements, like the full load effect on the car. If your car had less fuel, it was faster. Instead, Formula 1 2001 introduced a totally new feature, the spectator mode, with the possibility to decide the starting position of every driver. In this game mode, you can watch a Grand Prix with the game engine, but after a few laps it became a bit boring, in my opinion, considering the AI wasn't so smart. But the interesting thing was to invert the grid according to the skills level of the driver, putting in the first places the slowest ones and last uh, the fastest ones, to have thrilling and interesting races. Like the PlayStation 1 generation, also the PlayStation 2 generation had two game modes, arcade and a more simulative one. But unlike the PlayStation 1 version, there weren't big changes in terms of physics. 
The arcade one of both games gave you the possibility to race immediately, while in the more simulative one you could do all the weekend sessions and set up your car, while in the electronic arts game it just deactivates both ABS and traction control. Talking about car setup, both games add a decent variety of settings which had a real effect on the car's behavior. Anyway, keep in mind both games were considered as a sim arcade when they were released. The, even the next chapters. After the 2001 season, uh, we passed the 2002 season, with both Studio Liverpool and Electronic Arts, which made a refined version of both games. Both games were the 2001 game with slightly better graphics and uh, updated themes and drivers. Formula 1 2002 you had the possibility to set the traction control, the introduction of the cockpit view and a new mode which allowed you to play as the safety car. EA Sports Formula 1 2002 introduces new game modes like the team duel where you have to beat uh, your teammate and new challenges present already in 2001 version. That uh, remind me a bit um, the Gran Turismo 1. Moreover, the slipstream effect was more emphasized. Both games featured interactive pit stops, but uh, the innovation stopped there. Nowadays we are disappointed by FIFA and Formula 1 games uh, are the same year by year. Well, back in early 2000s uh, we were starting the same situation. It's hard to get better, but both game developers did a good job in the graphics part, but in my opinion they could improve way more the physics part at least, especially the studio Liverpool's one. In 2002 I had 11 years old, and I still remember I hated the tires model in Formula 1 2002. It feels like you're driving with plastic tires. <laughs> The thing that perplexed me in uh, EA Sports Formula 1 2002 instead uh, was the Nürburgring and the Hockenheim tracks uh, that uh, remain in the same of 2001 season, while as you know, uh, especially the Hockenheim track got completely new in 2002, although we all know we prefer the older and faster version of it. is on the edge of its seats as the lights go on five sets of lights any moment now and it's go everybody away and rushing down towards that right hander huge crowd huge roar we're racing at Hockenheim between the two games the studio Liverpool's one was the one which got most of changes I feel like electronic arts got a bit lazy this time he's lost control he's off Jensen Button has gone off the track Jano Trulli retires from this Grand Prix EA Sports, it's in the game. In 2003, Sony, which was the owner of uh, Studio Liverpool, managed to kill Electronic Arts by buying a multi-year exclusive licensing contract with the Formula One administration. Electronic Arts, uh, as you know, is a financial expert and despite uh, that lack of uh, licensing uh, for the 2003 Formula One season, 
decided to create a game which included four championships years from 1999-2002. That game was Formula One Challenge 9902. Available on PlayStation 2, Xbox and computer, it had an expected success thanks to mods, which managed to keep it alive even after several years. Formula One Challenge 9902 was a new game, better graphics and more realistic physics. It was a huge step up compared to EA Sports Formula One 2002. Just watch at how realistic our car spins. So, starting from 2003, we started having just one Formula 1 game per year. That game was Formula 1 2003 by Studio Liverpool. And guess what? It had the same plastic tar physics effect from 2002. Kid mode was perfect if you wanted to pass 5 entertaining minutes. The main challenge was to avoid the mages, so you had to drive clean uh, and to avoid accidents. But if we exclude the hood and the drivers from 2003, it was exactly the same game of the previous year, with slightly better graphics. Even the car setup screen was the same from 2002. Montreal and what a beautiful spectacle this racetrack is and we're going to be green flag racing any moment now off and we're away and the front two rows attack as we go down towards that very tight left-hander in my opinion the lack of contenders on Formula One games that made Studio Liverpool a bit lazy exactly as Electronic Arts and they've touched it looks as though he's just given the car ahead a little kiss as he tried to overtake Yes, a slight lapse in concentration is all it takes, and that could have so easily ended both their races. What about Formula 1 2004? Same story of uh, 2003 indeed. But considering the hardware was still the same, we have to praise the developer for the effort to improve even more the graphics. Finally here we could see the true graphics potential of PlayStation 2. But once again the problem was still the same. Slippery plastic tires. But cars were slightly more drivable. That means finally developers understood there was something wrong with the physics. Like the previous game of the series, even the 2004 version features the spectator mode option. But uh, this time it missed the television spotcaster. Too bad. Menu were different. And uh, also set up feature more options. There was a new game mode which allowed you to create your driver avatar and start your season with pre-season tests. I know I'm not that handsome in real life, but I'm not that ugly neither. Anyway, to be short, this Formula 1 2004 was a little better than Formula 1 2003, but it needed something more on the physics part to make it the definitive Formula 1 on PlayStation 2. And finally it happened with Formula 1 2005. Formula 1 2005 was a total brand new game. New game engine, new graphics, new physics. Yeah, there was a bit of pop-up on the far objects, but overall the graphics were a great step up. It doesn't have the same graphics of Gran Turismo 4 or Enthusia, but this game was really beautiful on PlayStation 2. But the best improvement was the TARS model. 
Now the soap effect was completely removed and cars felt grippy for a better driving pleasure. Moreover, tires feature also temperature and a better wearing system. The EI was better and now uses the slipstream to overtake. Formula 1 2005 featured also historic Formula 1 cars with way different handling compared to the modern ones. This was the last Formula 1 game I made expressly for PlayStation 2, because the next one was a cross-gen game. Formula 1 2006 was available on both PlayStation 2 and PSP, and it's also the second last game made by Studio Liverpool, which sadly Sony will make them disappear in 2012. It's the second last because the last game will be Formula 1 Championship Edition, which will be released in 2007 on PlayStation 3, but it will still feature the 2006 Championship. In fact, sadly, people had to wait until 2009 to play another Formula 1 game, made by Codemaster this time, but uh, this is another story. Talking about physics, it was basically the same game uh, as uh, Formula 1 2005, but graphics uh, were slightly better. On PlayStation Portable, the game was spectacular when I bought it back in 2005. Let's say the two biggest introductions of this game were the same big introduction of the real Formula 1 of 2006. The V8 engine sound and the no-out qualifying system which uh, we still use today in 2021. Formula 1 2006 was the swan song of the 128 bits generation and uh, actually it's the best Formula 1 game you can play today on PlayStation 2. Well, as you can see, despite the same hardware, Formula 1 games improved a lot in 6 years in both physics and graphics. And this concludes this retro gaming video about the Formula 1 games of the PlayStation 2 generation. If you liked this video, please check my previous 14 retro gaming episodes in the video description about your favorite games of your childhood. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video!